Hello everyone, this is Vai Manoharadi, Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today I am going to discuss about the how are different types of PGP services are offered to provide a mail as to be secure. How the PGP services are provide a secure way in terms of mail sending. So what are the different types of PGP services? So before that, what is meant by PGP? So before going to discuss about PGP services, we have to understand that what is meant by PGP? What is meant by PGP? So PGP stands for what? Pretty good privacy. Pretty good privacy. And which is a encryption system, which is a encryption system or encryption method or encryption process, encryption process that provides that provides that provides a secure channel that provides a secure channel to send emails to send emails in secure way to send emails in secure way so pgp is a pretty good privacy is an encryption system or an encryption method or an encryption process that provide that provide security for the sending mails for the sending mails to the recipient so to do this to do this or to available this we have to use the pgp services we have to use the pgp services the first one is what authentication authentication as a pgp service confidentiality as a pgp service compression as a pgp service email compatibility as a pgp service and segmentation as a pgp service so first one is what authentication as a pgp service second one confidentiality as a pgp service and third one compression as a pgp service and the fourth one email compatibility as a pgp service and segmentation as a pgp service with the help of all these services by offering this all the services the pretty good privacy mechanism is success in terms of providing the security for the security emails in terms of providing the security for the or writing the secure emails writing secure emails here the pgp services the first one is what a digital signature first one is what a digital signature is for authentication the digital signature is applied for authentication purpose and here to use this function to use this digital signature function we have to use these uh, algorithms we have to use some certain sort of algorithms the first one is what a dss algorithm first one is what dss algorithm data security standard data security standard and the sha algorithm secure hash authenticated algorithm rsa or sha algorithms so here this algorithm which is a hash code of a message is created which is a hash code of message is created using sha1 algorithm using sha1 algorithm this message digest is encrypted this message digest is encrypted using dss algorithm or rsa algorithm with the sender's private key with the sender's private key and included with the message included with the message but in the second message encryption message encryption process is done with the help of this cached algorithm cached algorithm or idea algorithm idea algorithm or three key triple dash algorithm three key triple dash algorithm with diffie hellman or rsc algorithm triple dash algorithm with diffie hellman or rsc algorithm a message is encrypted a message is encrypted or cast 128 or idea or triple dash with one time session key 
generated by the sender one time session key generated by the sender the session key is encrypted the session key is encrypted using diffie hellman or rsa algorithm with the recipient's public key with the recipient's public key and included with the message and included with the messages and third one is compression process compression process for this zip algorithms are used here a message may be compressed for storage or transmission for storage or transmission using zip function using zip function and fourth one email compatibility email compatibility so radix 64 conversion radix 64 conversion to provide transparency for email applications to provide transparency for email applications an encrypted message an encrypted message may be converted to an ascii string using a radix 64 conversion using radix 64 conversion so this is the radix 64 conversion for compatibility of the email checking compatibility of the email checking and the segmentation segmentation to accommodate maximum message size limitations to accommodate maximum message size limitations pgp performs segmentation under reassembly pgp performs segmentation under reassembly process so to reduce the size of the packets to reduce the size of the message the pgp performs segmentation process and applying reassemble process applying reassemble process so the services uses this all the functions so digital signature is for authentication function message encryption is for encryption function and the compression process for compression and the email compatibility for email compatibility and segmentation is for segmentation process segment is for segmentation process and here authentication so what is meant by authentication here the hash function is used sha1 the sha1 is algorithm which creates 160 bit message digest which creates 160 bit message digest here ep encryption process represents public encryption or public decryption so ep encryption process represents that what either encryption public encryption or public decryption and the algorithm used can be algorithm used can be either rsa algorithm or dss algorithm either rsa algorithm or dss algorithm and recall that the DSS can only be used for the digital signature function. So recall that what the DSS, DSS, this digital signature standard, digital signature standard can only be used for the digital signature function. And unlike RSA, cannot be used for encryption or key exchange. So DSS algorithm is used for only digital signature standards, but not like a RSA, it does not provide, it does not use it for encryption or key exchange process. It does not use it for encryption or key exchange process. And the message may be compressed, message may be compressed using an algorithm called ZIP. Message may be compressed using an algorithm called ZIP this is represented by z in the figure this is represented by z in the figure in the figure mentioned in the in the figure mentioned in next slide next slide the combination of both sha1 and rsa so one is for providing digital signature and one is for providing encryption it provides an effective digital signature scheme it provides an effective digital signature scheme so because of the strength of SHA-1, because of the strength of SHA-1, the recipient is assured that no one else could generate a new message. No one else could generate a new message that matches the hash code and 
that matches the hash code and hence the signature of the original message the signature of the original message second one is what confidentiality so the first one authentication is for providing authentication with the help of both digital signature and an encryption process so digital signature is used by the dss algorithm and uh, encryption process is used by the rsc algorithm and second one confidentiality the user has a choice of the different algorithms like a cast 128 algorithm 128 bit algorithm idea international digital encryption authentication or triple trace algorithm or triple trace algorithm and in 64 bit cipher feedback mode 64 bit cipher feedback mode the symmetric key is used only once symmetric key is used only once and is created and is created as a random number as a random number with the required number of bits it created a random number with the required number of bits and it is transmitted along with the it is transmitted along with the message and is encrypted using the recipient's public key using the recipient's public key the message is transmitted to the destination or recipients along with it it is encrypted along with the recipient's public key recipient's public key and receiver side the receiver can uh, receiver can receive that message and uses the private key to decrypt that message so here the sender generates a message and a random number so generating message and a random number to be used as a session key for this message only so here random key is used as a session key for this message the message is encrypted using cast 128 idea or triple dash with the session key so the message is encrypted with the help of these three with the session key and the session key is encrypted this session key is encrypted with the rsa so session key uh, is is for only private purpose and the message is encrypted using cast and id and triple s algorithms with the session key and the session key is encrypted with the rsa using the recipient's public key and is prevented to the message and is prevented to the message the receiver uses rsa with its private key to decrypt and recover the session key to decrypt and recover the session key the session key is used to decrypt the message the session key is used to decrypt the message here the pgp cryptographic functions here the pgp cryptographic functions so for authentication only the message is generated applying hash and uh, applying encryption process applying compression process and uh, zip applying zip so for the re receiver side that zip may be unzipped then next the message is going to be decryption process public decryption key public decryption uses this public uh, decryption key and applying that key uh, as a original message to this and compare both compare both messages then it it receive it, it received to the destination side it received to the destination side and the second one confidentiality confidentiality only so the message and the message is compressed and it is encrypted encrypted with the help of encryption process key and after compression applying that encryption process to this compression message after compression the message is going to be delivered to the receiver side now the receiver received the message receiver received the message and apply the decrypting process applying decrypting process with the key session key and the decoding process is also done with the help of this the uncompressed process is also done uncompressed process is also done now the original message is received by the receiver side original message is received by the receiver side but for this confidentiality and authentication both purpose for the confidentiality and authentication both purpose 
it applies both techniques it applies both techniques like message under the message with a using hash function like ssa1 applies ssa1 and applies encryption process applies encryption process the next uh, compression process the next uh, encoding process uh, the next uh, with the help of uh, session key it is terminated into encryption process encryption key encryption data and now the encryption data is uh, received by the receiver apply the uh, public uh, decryption key which is receiver receiver key and uh, process the decompression the next uh, decompression process the next uh, apply the hash com hash function the next use the decryption process key decryption public key compare both them the receiver can receives the message compare both them the receiver can receives the message and confidentiality and authentication confidentiality and authentication both services may be used for message both services are may be used for message the first a signature is generated for the plain text message and prepended to the message so here the signature is generated for the plain text message and prepended to the message then the plain text message plus signature the plain text message plus signature is encrypted using this cached 128 algorithm or id algorithm or triple dash algorithm cached 128 algorithm or id algorithm or triple dash and the session key is encrypted using rsa the session key is encrypted using rsa this sequence is preferable to the opposite encrypting the message and then generating a signature so encrypting the message is first then generating the signature of the encrypted message it is generally more convenient to store signature with a plain text version of a message so it is very convenient to store a signature with a plain text version of a message so furthermore for the purposes of third party verification if the signature is performed first if the signature is performed first the third party need not to be considered with a symmetric key when verifying the signature symmetric key is not verified for the signature the next the compression process so pgp compresses the message after applying the signature but before encryption so the compression process is going to be do before encryption so before encryption so compression is comes first the next encryption but uh, it applies after the digital signature so after the digital signature the compression process has to be applied after the compression process the encryption process may be applied so that compresses that message after applying the signature after applying the digital signature but before encryption process this has the benefit of saving space both for email transmission both for email transmission and for file storage so this has the benefit of saving space for both email transmissions and file storage the placement of the compression algorithm the placement of the compression algorithm indicated by z so compression process compression algorithm indicates that by z for compression and z universe z universe for decompression z universe for decompression process decompression process the signature is generated before compression for two reasons so the signature is generated before compression because of the two reasons are placed because of the two reasons are placed one is it is preferable to sign it is preferable to sign an uncompressed message an uncompressed message so it is free of the need for a compression algorithm which is need for a compression algorithm for later verification also but different version of pgp produce different compressed forms so 
without a signature so without signature we cannot go for the compression because if we do the compressor before the signature then we are not going to we are not going to give the uh, documents for the signature so we are not going to apply the digital signature after the compression so that's why the, di the digital signature process comes first first for after that compression comes so applying the hash function and the signature applying hash function and the signature after compression would constrain all pgp implementation to the same version of the compression algorithm of the compression algorithm and the second one is message encryption he is applied message encryption is applied after compression to strengthen cryptographic security to strengthen cryptographic security because the compressor message has less redundancy because of the compressor message has less redundancy than the original plain text than the original plain text so crypto analysis is more difficult crypto analysis is more difficult so message encryption is applied after compression is going to give the strength and to the cryptographic security because the compressor message has less redundancy than the original plain text so so here crypto analysis is more diff difficult so the compression algorithm use used is called as zip which is described in the recommended text so here the compression process is applied for compression process is applied for encryption process the next email compatibility email compatibility so any electronic mail systems only permit the use of blocks consisting of ascii text so any electronic mail systems only permit the use of blocks consisting of ascii text so when pgp is used when pgp is used at least part of the block to be transmitted is encrypted so when pgp is applied to that uh, blocks of uh, ascii text at least a part of the block to be transmitted is encrypted particularly block to be transmitted is encrypted this basically produces this basically produces a sequence of arbitrary binary words which some mail systems won't accept that cannot be accepted by some mails so to accommodate this restriction to accommodate this restriction pgp uses and algorithms known as radix 64 so which is a compatibility of emails algorithm and which maps 6 bits 6 bits of a binary data into 8 bit ascii text which maps 6 bit bytes 6 bits of a binary data into 8 bits of ascii character 8 bits of ascii character so unfortunately this expands the message by 33% however with the compression algorithm the overall compression will be about 1/3 about 1/3 about 1/3 and the segmentation so the segmentation email facilities are often restricted to the maximum message length so some of the mails are restricted to the specific size of the message that is 25 mb or 10 mb or 30 mb so like that for example many of the facilities accessible throughout the internet impose a maximum length of 50000 octets maximum length of 50000 octets any message longer than that must be broken up into smaller segments broken up into smaller segments so each of which is mailed separately each of which is mailed separately so to accommodate this restriction to accommodate this restriction pgp automatically subdivides a message it automatically subdivides a message that is too large into segments that are small enough to send via email so pgp automatically subdivides the large message into small small messages and that are to be sent via mail that are to be sent via mail the segmentation is done after all the other processing after all the other processing 
it including the radix 64 conversion including the radix 64 conversion thus the session key component the session key component and the signature component so one is key component and one is signature component appear only once at the beginning of the first segment only one at the beginning of the first segment so large message is divided into smaller so each and every small segmentation before processing it, it includes rx radix 64 conversion and the session key components and signature components also applied at the receiver end pgp must strip off all email headers all email headers and reassemble the entire original block entire original block before performing the steps before performing the steps so segmentation process is required for reducing the size of the maximum message to be sent via email and here generic transmission diagram and generic reception diagram so how the mail is going to be transferred to the receiver side so at the moment the transmission process and uh, how the mail is received from the sender at the moment of receive reception side at the moment of receiver mail so this is one sender mail and this is one receiver side so one is what receiver side and the second one is first one is what sender side so how the mail is going to be sent and how the mail is going to be received so here the file the file which is going to be uploaded which is going to be attached to the mail is required is, uh, is it required a signature if yes then generate the signature with the help of some digital signature techniques if not required then process it so after signature required it has to be compressed it has to be compressed so the file is going to be compressed with the help of zfx now after compression process the file has to be applied encryption the file has to be keep very secure then apply confidentiality apply confidence so here to apply that compressed file apply the confidentiality to the compressed file if yes then apply encryption keys apply encryption keys else if not required then convert it to radix 64 bits convert it to radix 64 bit if yes then encrypt it and then convert it to radix 64 bit checking for the email compatibility then next it is forwarded to the receiving recipient side then it is forwarded to the recipient side now at the moment of receiver side at the moment of receiver side so first of all it converts what it exactly receives the message is going to be converted from radix 64 to radix 64 to x now if if you want to decrypt that file if it is the confidentiality required file then click on yes then use the decryption process use the decryption process if if at all not decrypted if it are not using confidentiality then apply directly to the decompress process apply decompression process now the file is going to be decompressed after that whether it is authenticated or not check it once if it is authenticated purpose then verify the signature verify the signature verify the signature the strip signature from x verify signature if it is verified then it uh, uh, received by the receiver if it is not verified then it is not received by the receiver so this is the way of uh, uh, mail is going to be sent uh, from the sender to the receiver side from sender to the receiver side so here <coughs> The thing is what the message is going to be message is going to be applied with the digital signature after applying digital signature only it is going to be compressed after compression only it is going to be encrypted at the moment of sender side at the moment of sender side at the moment of receiver side at the moment of receiver side it processed the first of all encryption then next compressed decompressed then next it is going to be applied a digital signature applied digital signature so like the way how the message is how the message or mail is going to be received by the receiver by providing some security services by providing some uh, pgp services like uh, authentication confidentiality and the compression 
So with that uh, compression, with that uh, digital signature, with that encryption, with that uh, file can be segmentation, all this process has to be done in the PGP services. So this is all about PGP process, service, PGP services. So once again, we'll, uh, we'll say, we'll revise the topics which we discussed in this session. So to understand that PGP services, we have to understand what is meant by PGP. So PGP is nothing but pretty good privacy and it is an encryption system, encryption process or encryption mechanism that provides security to write the mails in secure way. It provides a security mechanism, security way to write the security mails. So how the services are offered with the help of some functions means the digital signature is one type of function for authentication and encryption for encryption purpose and compression for compressing purpose, email compatibility for compatibility purpose and segmentation for segmentation purpose, segmentation for segmentation purpose. So these are all different types of algorithms that are using that are using for the <coughs> that are using for the digital signature purpose, message encryption purpose, and the compression purpose, email compatibility purpose, segmentation purpose. And here authentication. So to do that authentication, the message has to be digitally signatured and then provide encryption key. So it has to be signatured. It is it has to be verify the signature plus encryption process. It has to be digital signature plus encryption process. The next cached confidentiality. So for the confidentiality purpose, we use a different types of algorithm. The next uh, cryptographic functions that are applying for authentication purpose as well as confidentiality purpose on the basis of both confidentiality and authentication purpose. The next uh, confidential compression purpose. So how they are going to be compressed with the help of some the what are the reasons that to be signature is generated. So here the compression purpose and the email compatibility mechanisms. And the last segmentation and how the sender and receiver got the mails or send sending by the sender and received by the receiver with the help of the PGP services like compression and decryption and encryption process. So how it offered with the signature, how it offered with the compression and how it offered with the encryption process. So to by providing all these types of services to the mails, to the files, we can able to say that uh, the mail, mails and uh, files are to be in safe, files and mails are to be in safe. So this is all about the PGP services are offered to provide the, uh, to provide the service mechanism to write the secure mails, to write the secure mails. So that is all about the PGP services. Thank you all. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.